All right, we have a, a final conversation for this morning. We're looking at the 2023 census uh, of Nigeria. It will be the first uh, national census held in the country since the 2006 census. I don't know if you remember uh, the 2006 census. I remember it because uh, I was part of the exercise. Uh, over 190 billion naira has been allocated for the 2023 exercise. The National Council of State an organ of the federal government of Nigeria responsible for advising the executive on, on policy matters last year made a resolution that Nigeria will hold its national population census in April 2023 after the general elections which are slated for February and March in 2023. This is 17 years after the last census was held, like I said earlier, in August 2006, according uh, and according to Nasser Isa Kwara, who is the Director General of the Nigerian Population Commission, the current data in use by the country uh, is obsolete, or he calls it obsolete projections. Those are his words. Now, in August last year, President Buhari, uh, at a National Stakeholders Summit on the 2023 uh, Population and Housing Census, reiterated the importance of an accurate census next year, saying that the correct figures will help the country in planning for the citizens. Joining us this morning to discuss this, we have Suleiman Akonde. He's a public affairs analyst. Vazum from Abuja. Suleiman Akonde, good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. Um, good morning. Thank you for having me. All right. Um, uh, why does Nigeria need another population census? I know we've heard from the president. Uh, we've been talking about it since last year. But why does Nigeria need another population census? Yeah, um, census is as important as any facet of our capital, uh, human um, development because this is the data that guide us on what we really need as a people and as a nation. Census, unlike any other thing, you know, we've had a lot of um, numerous ways of what evaluating data in Nigeria, and people have argued that okay, we have things like um the National Identification Management Scheme, the Voters Card, the International Passport. All these are never enough if census data are not there for the government to use. Why census is important is that it allows government to plan policy, budget, and even how to direct each of their program and who to direct it to. As you rightly said earlier, our census the last census was in 2006. You can see the number of years that we are right behind. As we are using a data as old as 2006 to make plans for ourselves. Just like at every shopkeepers, if you have, if you have a shop, a, a shopkeepers have um, the, uh, the number of wares he has in his in his stores. You need to keep in place what are those wares that are still available. What are, what are those that are obsolete? Oh, obsolete. And where did he need to also improve? What did he need to stock in, among other things? Not like a father. A father that has one child in 2006 can't be making the same plan with one child, whereby now he now has about five child to also cater for. So, sense of data is very, very important as a people so that we'll be able to also plan on what we are spending. And now, don't just only that. That is why you can see some of the developmental goals we have subscribed to as a nation, like the SDG. That is why it's not really serving its purpose because we are not really planning with the accurate data. You can see some of the figures that are out there. Some will tell you that we are 250 million, we are 300 million. Up to now, we will not even give the accurate data that we are in the accurate population of the country. All are just based on projection. So I must tell you that this census is coming at the very right time and we really need it and it should really be an exercise that should be given all the seriousness. Why, in your opinion, has it taken this long, 17 years for Nigeria, to have uh, a national count? Yeah, I think uh, it's just um, our uh, normal ways of um, um, attending to issues. It essentially should be a national issues. And I think just uh, someone says that without data, you're just like any other person out there. What that data does a lot to, to people, even in a well, in a small company or even a small family, having a good data even help everyone to to plan. 
So having it taking this long, I believe it's people. Actually, some people have argued that the amount that uh, being that is being earmarked for the census is too much because we have other pressing issues. And as government, sometimes they will claim that oh, they are trying to prioritize other needs of their of government. That spending such amount of money on it is uh, is too much. But personally, for me, that um, no amount is too much to know the number of people that live in a country so that you can have a better planning so uh, a, a better planning and know what to do for each area of the uh, in, of the of the country um the, the the previous census in the country they've been uh, um embroiled in controversy you know with uh, most people not believing the figures being put out uh, by the government i mean of course we're used to not knowing how many we are because we still we are a country of about 150 million people. We just, oh, I think now we've taken it to up, up to about 180 million people. We always guess. Um, and it will give us a chance to know how many we have. But the controversy surrounding uh, the, as an exercise as simple as the census is real in this part of the world. Um, why do you think it's always a controversial um, uh, subject, an, an exercise that people uh, really, really come out to talk about in, in, in this way, you know, we've talked about maybe trust. We can talk about issues of trust. Um, it's, it's usually controversial. A lot of people do not trust that government may do the right thing. Why is this such a controversial subject, census, in Nigeria? Yeah, it will always be controversial because um, you remember uh, in demography, we used to say that population itself is an asset. So people always try to aggregate a particular number to themselves so that when it comes to the sharing of maybe resources or allocation of resources you always give um, much resources to a region or a place that have higher um, population but sometimes a population is an asset but at the same time if that if that I population that is those numbers are not converted into something meaningful it will be a kind of, it won't be an asset, whereby it will be a problem to, to, to the people. You remember there is a kind of, um, the figure in 2006 was contested by Lagos State and government. The Lagos State government even need to go ahead to conduct their own census and says that the figures rolled out by the, the National Population Commission does not reflect the true population of Lagos State. And Lagos State came and did their own personal uh, census and they came out with a, with a figure. So likewise, but one good thing about uh, this age and now is that in 2006 census, I think it's the first census that GPS and geospatial approach was also introduced to our population and census and exercise. But in 2023 now, uh, we have even a better technology to solve the issue of uh, census. Well, one good thing is that we can have a unique number allocated to each person. However, you have things like biometry, fingerprint and everything. So it will may even make it hard for people to allocate figures that are not a true reflection of what is a, what is on ground. So people do that naturally because you have something to boast of. That is, my state has social number of population. We can use that to negotiate when we get to the table, among other things. But I, I think NPC just need to at least improve on what we used to have before and have an exercise that will really reflect the true population of each state and each region. Mm. So you're saying it's a political tool, that the, the population is a political tool um, for sharing the national cake. And you need to have more people if you want to have more of the cake. Uh, I, I don't know if you're confident that we can have, because now I, all I see from what you're saying is corruption. The age-old corruption that we uh, have been used to in this country, finding its way into something as simple as counting how many people are in the room something how many houses are in the country it's just that and corruption has entered because of greed uh, um in 2006 i was uh, I happened to have the privilege to be part of the census exercise from the mpc angle and uh, i remember that it was a particular local government area in a particular ward where after going through the the, the training on by mpc officials of mpc took some persons you know ad hoc stuff and trained them um they were meant to go do the enumeration, the counting, proper, after doing their, their training and all that. And lo and behold, from nowhere, um, they were told, these, uh, those, the enumerators were told that, oh, you can't go ahead and do the count. We'll 
the community people, the ward, um, and the locality, the village, villagers themselves, they have people that they are going to come and do it. That's what we, we, we had. You know, as a matter of fact, I remember clearly that a particular councillor from that local government was always coming for the trainings and coming for the programs because then I was, I, was, um, I was involved in one way or the other. Um, and he was always coming around. And at the end of the day, people who government spent money to train did not even do the counting. They took people from the local government, indigents, they were insisting they must be allowed to count. You know. So are you confident that 2023 will be different from 2006, where a state like Kanu ended up having more people than legal state? Yeah, that is why I said NPC should at least up their game this time around. But this is what will happen. Uh, there is a cultural different differences to every national exercise. We must establish that fact first. That is, in, if you go to if you go to a conservative society, whereby you can't just board into people's house and start doing exercise, you must be able to get someone from that locality that really understands the nitty gritty and how the environment uh, works. So, number one is this: NPC needs to do a kind of cultural analysis of uh, affairs as it do as it has to apply to to each state. And I say, fortunately, now. I think part of the, I think I had in a uh, MPC report, part of the exercise would be that we we'll always link the population sensor to also um, the NIN, whereby you have a unique identity code. And we must not also forget, census is not just about counting people, it has to also build that household, housing deficit, socioeconomic um, living condition of people among, among other things. So things like that need to also be worked on. They have an existing data to work on, you mock up that data, then you also have something new to do. Learn from the uh, lesson of the past, whereby you have people that are really domiciled in that community to do it. But we have taken also, I understand that if you ask people to in a community to do it, this can also be um, a kind of, they can abuse that uh, privilege. But with technology in place, you can use this to auto checkmate any anomaly or any new introduction that could be made to, to the data. Yeah, so what happened in 2006 should not repeat itself, whereby a state will have to come out and say that, no, this is not the reflection of our data. So we should have an exercise that every Nigeria will agree with and say, oh, NPC has done a very great job. Hmm. Do, we, do we need to have some sort of you know, input from the international community to ensure uh, fairness in such a uh an exercise um so that we don't see some parts of the country rejecting the figures at the end of the day sure there is nothing wrong with that they can serve as a, an observer and they can also serve as a, maybe a kind of in advisory capacity that is advising the nigerian government on their experience in other parts of the world on what to do and how to do it i must understand one thing there is also the kind of landmass um, immigration. If you have a place whereby, uh, just like you said in the last exercise, I remember in places like, uh, and I was in uh, Yobe around around that time. So moving from one particular place to another is also very, very hard. And how do you assess people in the interland? How do you assess people in the riverine area? How do you do this, how, um, among other things? So we should understand that it is an exercise that is very, very capital intensive, it is also it also need a lot of personnel. It need a lot of technical know-how, and it also need a lot of commitment from the all and sundry. Just look at what happened in, in two thousand and six. I think sometime it happened in the weekend. Uh, the question is this: Will you take the census during weekdays? Most time they do that. I think they do that during we, uh, weekends sometime. Or should but should we declare a national public holiday for a whole week? To take census, all these are questions NPCs uh, will answer. Or should we just have it in weekend they don't, or also have it during the weekdays? Number two is this: we have people that the state of residence different from state of um, origin. Are you getting that? So that one shouldn't be a problem. But we need to uh, a kind of uh, match this uh, interest together so that it can reflect what really exists. So in places like uh, Lagos now, whereby you have a lot of uh, population. So how do you deploy people to make sure that these people are count and counted? 
when will you have to are you coming in the morning to do that are you coming in the evening which time is best to meet people at home and in their location so all these are questions that need to be answered before the exercise commence really mm. um, um we, we we haven't not just the population census but the population and housing census uh do you foresee um this you know year census given nigeria some sort of way to uh data to help it solve the housing deficit uh, uh, problem in the country? Yes, it is a um, very, it, it is, it is coming at the very right time. As you remember, we have um, a very big out there housing deficit in this part of the world. And if we can use that type of exercise, it will come in handy to solve the problem. The problem is that I used to, my argument has always been this. It is not even the problem of housing deficit. It is that kind of part of housing affordability. Some of these houses are around, come to Abuja here. The houses are there, but people cannot afford it. Even the rural urban migration is causing what we refer to as urban poor. So if we can have a population, uh, that is a population and housing plan sensor that is encompassing, we'll be able to also know that the social economic condition of every Nigerian, what type of housing should we provide for them? And what type of housing can they, uh, can they afford? so that you can aggregate between their income and the type of housing they could access. So, as you rightly said, I see it at least it will solve our housing deficit problem. Oh, very interesting indeed. We would like to leave it at that. Uh, Suleiman Akonde, a public affairs analyst, thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank you for having me. All right, we look forward to a successful uh, 2023 national housing and population census with the figures that will have a very, very good effect uh, on the Nigerian economy and state of affairs generally, generally rather, in the country. All right, please follow us on the social media platforms, the Plus TV Africa on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And indeed, the Plus TV Africa Lifestyle is our second YouTube account. You can also search uh, for our website where we update regularly news stories by the minute. My name is Kofi Bartels. On behalf of the entire team, the crew here, uh, cameramen, technical staff, production staff uh, from our studios right here in Victoria Allen Lagos, thank you for your time. I'll be back tomorrow. Good morning.